Hey, it's Mazzy, and welcome back to another episode of the Acid Archive Diaries. Uh, this is a series originated by Dom, seeking a thread. Link below to his channel. Uh, this is my second contribution. This book, this book, 2006, 2010 edition, uh, is jam-packed with records, some obscure kind of with psychedelia DNA, although the records on here are all psychedelic. They can have a sort of psychedelic DNA. It could be folk music, it could be uh, neoclassical, Baroque. I mean, there's so many levels, you know. Right now we're in this crazy time of subgenres. I mean, really, like shoegaze and what the, <laughs> what the fuck is shoegaze? I know what it is now, but there's all these different, you know, college rock, math rock, Indie rock is like everything that is you know, where you don't make any money, basically. I know that's not true, but it, it, it is an interesting thing. This is such an amazing book, and you can sit and, and go through this book for eons and discover things. And as I said in the first uh, video, the first submission I did on this, there's so much in here I don't know. I haven't heard of probably 75% of the records in here, and maybe I'll never hear them. You know, it's not like, you know, a thousand records you should hear before you die, one of those concepts. But, um, so there we go. Last time I did, if you saw the video I did on Orr, the Skip Spence album from Moby Grape, that kind of uh, freak folk record. We didn't even call it freak folk back then. Uh, but now we call, that's freak folk. Tim Buckley is freak folk. And I picked a record today uh, from Page number 100 even 100 and it's ron elliott's the candlestick maker this is on warner brothers records from 1970 who is ron elliott who's ron elliott well ron elliott was one of the founding members of the san francisco band the bow brummels the answer to the beatles uh i would guess that most of you have at least heard of the song Laugh, Laugh. Laugh, laugh, I thought I'd die. They were on a small label, Autumn Records in San Francisco, kind of run by Tom Donahue. The father of FM Radio started KMPX and KSAN, and then it swept the nation, all that, all those lower band FM stations that no one else wanted. They were classical or some weird shit stuff. And then all of a sudden, uh, Tom Donahue, found a station, old classical station, and you could play rock all night and maybe have 10 people listen and then 100 people listen and 1,000 people and it grew and look where we are today. Uh, all, all made it and, you know, three corporations run them all at this point. Um, but Ron Elliott was uh, one of the founding members of the Bo Brummels. I love that song. Uh, the, again, that first album, and Laugh Laugh, was produced by Sly Stone before uh, he... Um, obviously one of his own Sly and the Family Stone. Uh, he was a DJ in San Francisco and Daly City uh, in the Bay Area. And um, Bo Brummels had a, uh, a short-lived career, which is really unfortunate. I'll get to this in a second, but when I do these videos, I have to kind of do a preamble. And I want to read from this book because I have some issues with uh, what this gentleman wrote about. I don't agree with him at all on, on what he talks about, what he writes about this record. But that's what it's all about. It's opinions, right? It's uh, subjective opinions, our own opinions. Uh, after the Bo Brummels left Autumn Records, they got the big label contract with Warner Brothers. And Warner Brothers was considered, a, in the 60s and the 70s, an artist-friendly label. And they did the stupidest thing with this band. They bring them on in 1966, and they basically kind of make them. And I, I'm surprised, how, how can they make them? But they kind of uh, instructed or directed somehow the Bo Brummels to do a covers record. Their first record on a major label, two years after having that great single Laugh Laugh and Just a Little, and uh, they had a few hits actually. The other, the other hit was, um, let's see, it's called uh, You Tell Me Why. That was the other a wonderful song Ron Elliott and Sal, Sal Valentino wrote. But they go to this label. This was actually produced by Tom Donahue and Bob Mitchell, who, uh, you know, both San Francisco, but they do this. And it has covers of You Got to Hide Your Love Away, 
a year after the Beatles put it out. Mr. Tambourine Man, Louie Louie, Homeward Bound, Boots Are Made For Walking, Yesterday, Bang Bang, Hang On Slooby, Play With Fire. This sounds, Monday, Monday, this sounds like basically every, you know, garage band that I was in as a kid. I mean, this kind of, these kind of songs. How ridiculous is that, right? Out of here. Uh, luckily, uh, the next year, they were able to do a record on their own, produced by uh, the A&R and producer Lenny Warnaker, and they put this record out. It It bombs. But uh, I'm going to talk about this, too, because I'm going to do a twofer. This is a, a record that is not inside of, of this book of the archive. I look for the Bo Brummels. No Bo Brummels. Come on. Bo Triangle should have been in there. Maybe Bradley's Barn. But let's talk about this. 1970, uh, the Bo Brummels uh, split up. By this point, it's really only Ron Elliott and Sal Valentino. And, and Sal Valentino leaves and and joins up and starts this band called Stone Ground that actually also gets signed to Warner Brothers. A large outfit, like 10 or 11 musicians, uh, kind of a soulful, uh, or I don't say organic, but um, it, you know they made a number of records that are kind of interesting, but um, never really clicked on. They were friggin' great live, though. I saw them at Winterland, uh, great live band. But Sal Valentino, uh, uh, but they're still friends. In fact, Sal Valentino plays tambourine on two of these cats. But this is a wonderfully recorded record. This did nothing, and this was his sole uh, solo record. Uh, side two is a complete suite called The Candle Stick Maker Suite, Part One, Dark in the Dawn, and Questions. And I'm going to start backwards on that. A lot of great people on here all throughout it. Uh, based on this is Chris. Chris Etheridge, a great bass player who was with the um, the Flying Burrito Brothers. Um, you have also um, Sal Valentino, as I said, on tambourine. Uh, but side two is a suite. And every once in a while, you get these tinges of the Grateful Dead, sort of the jammy Grateful Dead on here on that song. But the rest of it is just a pretty much of a folk rock record with country influences, like the Bull Rebels had... Uh, commencing with a little bit of a triangle into Bradley's barn. But let me read, let me, let me go to this, because this is where I think I need to react and everything. And okay, this is written by PL. I have to look in the back and see who PL was. Let's see, PL is Robert Plant, <laughs> a graphic artist from Albany, New York. Not that Robert Plant, there's an E on the end. I assume that he wrote this. And what he says here is the main creative force behind the Bo Brummels returned with talent and artistic commitment intact on this solo album, which is which, if anything, is superior to the Bo Brummels final album. You're wrong, Robert Plant. I assume he's talking about this. Now, the uh, Bo Brummels did do one later reunion album on Warner Brothers. In 1975, they came back. And they put this out. This is a really good record. This is the original members of the Bo Brummels. Fantastic record, kind of country rock uh, in that mid '70s uh, sound. Uh, produced uh, that, that was, I think, produced by Lenny Warnaker as well. Really, really good record. Or Ted Templeton, maybe Lenny War Warnaker and ten Ted Templeton. Uh, but this is that 1968 country record country rock record where they go to Owen Bradley's barn in Nashville. So this is kind of considered their last album. This record is not better than this record. Now, now let me continue here. What he, what Robert Plant writes, he says, um, some people even think it surpasses triangle. I wouldn't go that far. Yeah, you're right. You, I wouldn't go that far either. Candlestick is a great album from the early singer-songwriter era, helped out by a legion of session pros. Elliot seemingly expands his songwriting craft and flair for drama to integrate the personal, soul-bearing aesthetic introduced by artists like Tim Hard Harden and Tim Buckley. His voice is oddly similar to Sal Valentino. Okay, right away, that's wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong, Robert Plant. I'm sorry. If you're watching this, I, well, I disagree. <laughs> so you're wrong because I disagree. He's got a, a, a voice that is a very nice voice. I don't uh, 
feel his voice is as strong for a lead singer. Uh, when he sings lead on Bo Brummel's tracks, it's always kind of mixed in with the others. But to me, Sal Valentino has a unique voice, a special voice, tinges of Bob Dylan, but it is so distinct and so recognizable. It kind of makes Ron Elliott's uh, vocals, his voice bland by comparison. Now, having said that, when they work together, it's magic. You know, Laugh, Laugh, and the harmonies on Laugh, Laugh, the harmonies on all those great Bull Brummel's records, you know, is sublime when the two of them are singing together. He is a great songwriter. They wrote great songs together on these albums. They were the magic of the Bull Brummel's, and it's really unfortunate they couldn't have continued and gone on from a Bradley's Barn, a record that bombed the same year as a country rock record, that Sweetheart of the Rodeo came out. Um, but there is some... Uh, magic on this record but his vocals don't have that extra thing you know there are a lot of great singers in the world and you know a lot of um you could compare this if you know the artist jim sullivan uh whose records have been reissued on uh, light in the attic records over the last i don't know decade or so he's the person that was driving from la to uh or southwest somewhere and he based in his volkswagen and he disappeared. They found the car. They never found him again. And his records, he's kind of got this cult status thing. You know, and his kind of voice, it's like, it's a voice that's really interesting and unique, but not like a Sal Valentino from my point of view. But it's nice. But the but the recording, this, the acoustic guitars on this, you also have um, Ry Cooter plays on one track, uh, Deep River Runs Blue, the last track on side one. And there's a wonderful uh, song, To the City, To the Sea, with a brass arrangement by um, Leon Russell. This is a folky rock record, uh, very organic, I'm using that word again. And it's a beautiful record, a cover photography by my friend, old friend, late friend, Jim Marshall, uh, the great kind of rock jazz uh, photographer. Um, but I could totally see why this record bombed, why it didn't catch on. There's a lot of singer-songwriters that came out like from 69, 70 to 72, 73 that were made really good records, but they don't have that extra little thing like Sal Valentino had here. So um, I'm going to disagree with what Robert Plant says in this. This is the entry on the Candlestick Maker uh Worth checking out if you see it. It's kind of rare. Uh, there was a reissue uh, that Rhino kind of associated with Scorpio. That's what this particular pressing is. I don't know even know when this came out, but it, it sounds wonderful. Really, really great recording, but it doesn't have that extra magic thing. Let me show this. At the end, the back of this book, I think I mentioned it last time, all the different critics talk about their top 10 records in this book and they also list 10 records not in the book so this is my record that's not in the book i was surprised that triangle was not in the book uh, this is considered sort of pop baroque folk music folk rock music it's more on the country folk side occasionally uh the hit on here actually there was no hit on here the record bombed but there is a song called Magic Hollow that um, was the single. I can't imagine that even being a hit single, but it's a really cool song. It opens up side two. It's got a great um, uh, harpsichord by Van Dyke Parks. You got a lot of uh, session musicians. Carol, uh, is it Carol Kane? No, Carol, the, the bass player from the Wrecking Crew is on here. The drummer, Jim Gordon, plays drums on this record. You have... Um, uh, James Burton on guitar on this. So you got a lot of the LA musicians at the time playing and backing them up. And it's got a great sound. It It's interesting. And, and But you have the combination of uh, mostly lead lead songs sung by Sal Valentino. Uh, you know, there's a couple of, of songs that don't work as well, but it does end up with a, a favorite of mine that I've always liked. And it's Old Kentucky Home, the Randy Newman song. So they do one cover. I believe that's the only cover on here. Um, yeah, uh, old Kentucky home, and it's a very kind of dandelion wine and talking fine. Uh, I can't sing, and I always try to, but uh, Triangle by the Bo Brummels, uh, 1967, right in the midst of all that psychedelia. 
This, you know, occasionally touches on a little neo uh, country uh, cosmic psych, but doesn't really go far enough for 1967. Maybe they should have gone in a little more, but I love the cover artwork. Uh, there was a Rhino, I think a Chris Bellman cut of this on, um, I think it was, oh, it was uh, the Summer of Love uh, Rhino reissues that came out in 2017. They did a whole series with tipped on jackets. Fantastic selling version. I do have that as well. But uh, pick this up, Triangle, a record that bombed in 1967. And Ron Elliott's The Candlestick Maker. Uh, there's a link below to Seeking a Threads. Uh, he has a playlist of all these uh, that people are contributing. This is the Acid Archives Diaries. Fantastic book. Um, thanks for watching. As he loves you. I, can't, I keep sticking with San Francisco so far, don't I?